Twenty odd years ago, explorer and adventurer Robin Hanbury Tennyson and his wife Luella made the first of their epic journeys on horseback. They travelled to the south of France to buy two beautiful Camargue horses. They then rode Tiki and T-Bear a thousand miles back to Bodmin Moor and a new life herding sheep and cattle on their Cornish farm. Filmed for the BBC, the Three White Horses programmes were hugely popular and were repeated numerous times. Robin is an extraordinary character. He has been named as the greatest explorer of the past 20 years, one of the thousand makers of the 20th century and recently the doyen of British explorers. Luella is his travelling companion and was recently High Sheriff of Cornwall. Oh boy. 20 years on and they're planning their next epic journey on horseback. This time through Europe's most mysterious and little known country, Albania, the land of eagles. Though they now have six Camargue horses, these won't be going to Albania. This is T-Bear, original my horse who came across France, now 29 years old. And uh, this is Tiki. Tiki is now very old, he's 27. I'd thought of taking them on our last and seventh ride, but it's too much for them. We're going to go and ride through Albania because it's the only country in Europe I haven't been to because it's a most exciting and wonderful country, and because uh, I've discovered there is a breed of Albanian horse, which nobody's heard of, which we're going to ride on. And people like you. People are interested in what you're doing when you're on a horse. People have the same concerns. In rural Albania, where a lot of the economy is still very dependent on horses, mainly for ploughing rather than riding, but they'll have blacksmiths and they'll... Instead of having your concern being boring things like where can I cash a check, where can I get petrol, where can I find a garage or anything. You're asking for blacksmiths and, 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 and hay and food and stabling and stuff. And so you're a real person. And people like you more and appreciate you more and understand you more and open up more and tell you better stories about the world. Of course Robin knows a lot about the world already. His travels from the rainforests of Borneo to the Sahara Desert have resulted in numerous books and films for the BBC and Channel 4. Albania may not be the top of everyone's must-see list, but that is precisely why Robin wants to go there next. Right, why Albania? Well, after a lifetime of exploring, and these are the files of all my expeditions that I've been on all over the world, including six long rides which we've made through different parts of the world, four of which I've written books about. This is going to be the fifth book, and it's about Albania, mainly because it's the country I've never been to in Europe, the last one. Uh, it's the least known country in Europe, and I think the most exciting country in Europe. A century ago, it was almost fashionable. Then, for 50 years, communist Albania was closed to the world. Robin and Luella will be following in the footsteps of three highly distinguished travellers and writers. Byron rode up into Albania in 1809 and wrote Child Harold there. It's all about Albania. It was a bestseller in 1809 because it was so sexy and racy and suggestive about the exotic mysteries of the Orient. Edward Lear painted some of his best paintings in Albania and travelled very widely through the country and wrote wonderful diaries. But he not only painted exotic, beautiful pictures, he also put thumbnail sketches in about him on a horse riding through Albania. Well, I hope I can use these because they're exactly how one feels when riding on a horse on these long rides. And then there's a famous English woman called Edith Durham who wrote a book called High Albania and lots of other books. She was in 1909, 100 years after Byron, travelling through this exotic, wild, feisty area in northern Albania where everybody killed each other for blood feuds all the time and still do a bit. Um, so it makes it exciting, but I, I think we'll be all right because we have you very good protection. You have to have good protection in Albania. Very few people have a clue where Albania actually is and it is almost completely off the tourist map, especially the areas where Robin and Luella will be going, which not so long ago 
saw scenes of terrible ethnic cleansing between Serbs and Albanians. And talking of maps, let me show you where we're going to go. We're going to start up here in the Accursed Mountains. There's a peace park which runs through part of Montenegro, Kosovo and Albania, northern Albania. All this area is now a transnational peace park. Very high mountains, the most beautiful, exotic, inaccessible mountains in Europe. And they are, everybody who goes there, very few people have been, all say they're the most wonderful place. Paddy Ashdown, of course, our great man on Kosovo, says we've got to go to a certain gorge, which he thinks is incredibly beautiful, and it is. So we're going to ride over several passes from Albania up into Montenegro, across into Kosovo, back into Albania, and then all the way down the unknown part of Albania. But in the interior, it is still the wildest part of Europe. And on the way, we'll go through the country of Edith Durham and Edward Lear and Byron and all the exciting things, ending up right down at the bottom in uh, where Byron came up into Albania from Greece. And we'll retrace his footsteps exactly down into Janina in Greece. And that's when we'll finish. <laughs> The journey begins this September and will last five or six weeks. A documentary about this adventure will be visually stunning and an entertaining watch. Unusually, we will be showing places and meeting people never seen before on TV and telling extraordinary stories, some old, some new, about a truly extraordinary place.